testimony um, I want you to consider where you are now as it relates to where you were when God started getting your attention not when he finally got your attention but when he first started to nudge you a little bit you know even though you thought you had it going on or even if you didn't hope to have it going on with Christ, he nudged you. Now, certain, several years ago, I would say around 1994, I lived in a place called Huntsville, Alabama. And I was working at a place called Teledyne Watch Act. Turn it off. good? Amen. That's better? Amen. And uh, I worked there because I needed a job. I had never worked in that type of, uh, that particular field. And it was a, a tungsten reduction, reduction plant. They made wiring and, and so forth out of tungsten steel. Now some of you may not know what tungsten steel is. It's an ore. It's a very heavy earth, uh, rare earth mineral very heavy. Uh, they put it in little containers like this and then it has to be refined. And what I did was worked in the, the department that was called reduction. And there were, I think, six or seven uh, furnaces in that department. So it was definitely hot. And uh, on one occasion, I was trying to hurry and clean up my area before I took a break because you had to clean your area up constantly anyway. But before you could leave your area for a break, you, you had to make sure you swept it up and everything. And that was fine. So on this particular day, uh, it was time to go to lunch. And so I was sweeping my area and somebody called my name. Somebody said, Terrence. And I stopped and I turned and, and I didn't see anybody. And so I figured it was the guys in the adjoining de department trying to play, you know, mess around, because you know how coworkers do. Hmm. And so I walked over to that area with my broom and I said, oh man, which one of you clowns was that? And nobody was there. And so from the time that I left asking which one of you clowns was it and headed back to my trash, I remembered that I'd heard that voice before. And, and it troubled me a little bit because I recognized that voice. I'd heard it years ago during a fast. Now, it's, 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 it's full disclosure, I wasn't saved at the time. I wasn't trying to be saved. I didn't believe I could be saved. I was as backslidden as backslidden could be. I was doing what Terrence wanted to do. And so I got back, and so I began to sweep, and I was about to clean up my pile, and I heard my name again, Terrence. And I knew who it was, and I kept my head down because it scared me. Because I thought, okay, I'm about to die and go to hell. And I said, yes, Lord. Is this all right? I need to raise it up. Is that good? Thank you. Uh, and I said, yes, Lord. Now, to give you an understanding of what I'm dealing with, I'm sweeping, it's hot, I want to hurry up and go smoke me a cigarette before my break is over. The voice, if I could pinpoint where it was, it was right about here from where I was. It seems like I could have touched that person's face. That's how close the voice was to me in, in terms of my own thinking. And the voice said to Terrence, today is the beginning of the end of the preparation. I said, what? He said, and lo, I come quickly. I said, well, Lord, why are you telling me this and what does that mean? 
He said, have you not heard, have I not told you that in my father's house there are many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you? Today is the beginning of the end of that preparation. And I, and, and I said, well, Lord, why are you telling me this? I don't even worship. I don't even serve you. And he told me a couple of things I will not share. And so I hurry up when he, got, when he got through talking. I hurry up and got the trash up. And by the time I got the trash up and walked to the loading dock where I was going to smoke my cigarette, I had convinced myself that I had thoroughly lost my mind. The heat had gotten to me. I was delirious thinking that the Lord would talk to me. So I, when I stepped on the loading deck, I said, good, the breeze felt good. I took out my, cig my cigarette, and I was about to light my cigarette. And he said, Terrence, and I stopped. And I turned around to see if anybody else heard it because it was so clear to me. I thought maybe they heard it. And, I, and so I didn't want nobody else to think I was, you know, had lost it like I thought I had lost it. So I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't move on. I said, yes, Lord. Yeah. He said, you see Young Mountain? Now, where the loading dock was, oh, about a mile and a half, was a little hill. Huh? Alabama's a, a mountainous, hilly, hilly region of the country. And there was a little hill. It wasn't a mountain to me. And I looked, and... And it's, it grew. He said, see yon mountain? And it grew. And he said, and it shifted. It grew and it moved. And he said, in that great day of my return, I will move these mountains and they will melt with a fervent heat. He said, today is the beginning of the end of the preparation. And lo, I come quickly. And I said, well, he can't use me. I'm unclean. I smoked cigarettes, and he said, I hadn't even said it, I just thought it. And he said, I will take those things out of your mouth. Now, I don't know why God wanted me to tell y'all that testimony, all that portion of the testimony, but God knows. So I went home, and I told my wife what happened. And I don't know if she remembers what she says, but I remember it like it was yesterday. She said, when are you going to do what God wants you to do? If you don't, he's going to take me from you. I don't know if she remembers that, but I remembered it. And it shook me. And I still refused to obey that voice. Now, you heard me say I heard that voice before. Mm -hmm. I heard it years prior, when, before, long before I met my wife, I was on a fast. And I was calling out to God, and I heard that voice said, I'd never heard anybody say my name like that before or since. It sounded like music. It sounded like wind. It sounded like rain. It sounded like thunder. I'd never heard my voice said like that, my name said like that sense or, or at all. But I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to tell you right now that I have not failed to watch. I have not failed to watch. There are moments when I've neglected, but even in my negligence, I couldn't help but watch. Because in my disobedience, I knew that one day God is going to call me to account for what I knew. Now, I know today's modern thinkers, if you don't have uh, 3,000 people in your congregation, then what you say cannot be true. If you're not an influencer, then what you say cannot be true. Perhaps I did lose my mind, some would say. But how can they explain the conversation I had subsequently back in 1999 on a balcony when the Lord told me, that he was going to take those things out of my mouth again. Things had begun to unfurl, begin to happen in my life that God was using to draw me closer to himself. Is that good? Do I keep hitting it? Is that why it's good? Okay. And so on that night, I was about to smoke a cigarette again. And I lit the cigarette. I was on the balcony of the apartment, and I looked out in this beautiful starry night, 
And I lit the cigarette. And I heard a voice say, Terrence, this is I, the Lord thy God. And I turned to look. And there was nothing there but the tree that was growing up beside the balcony in the starry night. And I felt so ashamed. Who am I to want to see this? This, this evidence of this voice. And I could not move and I felt so weak. And the Lord said, Terrence, do you want to see you the way I see you? And I said, yes. And he took me back, and I can confidently say it was in my spirit. He took me back in the spirit 10 years prior to that moment. And he took me back, and I saw myself. And all I could say was, ah, oh, because it was sheer filthiness. And I remember asking him, my cigarette was lit, and I couldn't understand while I was holding my cigarette, and I remember asking him how he could love that, Phil. He asked me subsequently, I won't go through all of it, he subsequently asked me a question. He said, where did you get your wife? And all I could do was cry and ask forgiveness. And I realized I could hear everything. The colors in the night look different. I won't go into all of that. But he did say this, and I will share this in, in this testimony. He said, Terrence, if you will humble yourself, obey my voice, do my will, I will restore your marriage. He said, and, and the people will know that I've done the other things that he told me he was going to do. I won't tell you, but he told me at the end, they will know that I did this. And he said, I will take those things out of your mouth. Now, the night that happened, my wife and I were crying out to God together. My wife had come and she told me some things. And she confessed. She said, I don't know how to pray. I said, we'll pray together. I had a pack and a half cigarettes with me. And we got together on the floor of that bedroom. Me and my wife, our lives were miserable. We weren't very happy. It wasn't the same night, let me be clear. And so we laid down on the floor and began to cry out to God. And I told my wife, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me my sin. She was obedient, she repeated Fill me with your spirit. And I began to speak in another language. And I, I, I knew I didn't know the language, but it seemed very natural for me to speak this language. And that voice that called my name was above my head and said, the language that you are now speaking, I spoke on my sojourn among men. It is called Aramaic. Tell your wife the interpretation thereof. Because I, I was amazed because nobody had laid hands on me. But we were crying out for my soul. When I got up and my wife got up, I told her what the Lord had said in the language of Aramaic to us. One of the first things he commanded us to do was to clean up our house, get rid of everything that was not pleasing to God. Is that correct? And we did. And the other thing that he did in that moment was he removed from me the desire to suck another cigarette and he replaced it with a repugnance toward cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke began to make me nauseous. I couldn't stand it. I was smoking two and a half packs a day by that time. I never smoked another cigarette after we got off that floor. Is that true? I got a witness. This is the mercies of God. So for those that think that I'm a shyster and that I'm just playing this game and, and that I'm just doing this for fame and money and all of that, they're devils. They are devils. If people think that God can't speak to them again, those are even greater devils because God does not have laryngitis and no one has cut his tongue out. So God speaks to whom he will. God, God will speak to whom he will. 
And I, I, I don't know why God wanted me to share that testimony with you. But let it be known that these things are true. These things are true. These are only a fraction of what God has done and shown me in my life. So will you pray with me as we go into the word? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your testimony. Lord, move in our midst today. Use me, O King, according to your good pleasure. Father, anoint every ear that they might hear what the Spirit would say unto them, and every heart that they might receive the same. I ask this, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last week we talked about a question that was asked, are you a vigilant Christian? And we went to the understanding of being what a watchman was and how to watch. Today... Uh, uh, I will tell you that as a watchman, as a person that has given themselves over to look for and to hasten to that blessed day, to, to consider their ways, to approach it to the throne of God out of a pure and contrite heart, you are called victorious. This message is part two of Are You a Vigilant Christian? And the, the statement is... You are called victorious. Now, one of the things that I want you to understand about vigilance, and I'll re repeat it for your hearing again, and it is characterized, vigilant is to watch, characterized by vigilance, to be wakefulness, the wakefulness and especially alert to danger, watchful. The word vigilance also means to not sleep insomnia. And so when we look at that, and we consider what the Spirit would say unto us. Christ is telling us that there has to be this, this inner thing that causes us, whether we be in slumber or awake, that we are watchful. We are watchful. Now, some would say, well, you can't watch while you're sleeping. No, but you could prepare yourself to be watched and have the Holy Ghost watch for you while you're sleeping. Yeah. Okay, the Holy Ghost will wake you up and tell you to leave the jailhouse. And you'll think it's nothing. You'll, you'll think you're in a trance. And God has already con, con, con prepared an exit strategy for you. And so, but there are four watches mentioned in the New Testament and three in the Old Testament. And so, when, what are these four watches? Now, these are periods of time. Each can compass in about three to four hours. So, there's the even watch. There's the midnight watch, there's the cock crowing watch, and there's the morning watch. The even watch is from 6 to 9 in the evening. The, the midnight watch is from 9 to 12. The, the cock crowing watch is around 12 to 3 a.m. And the morning watch is 3 to 6. So you have these watches. Now, the Israelites had a morning watch. In the Old Testament, you had the morning watch, which was when the sun came up. Then you had the even watch which was when the sun went down. And then you had the night watch, which is from sundown to sun up. And so when you have this understanding, that means that there has to be someone somewhere that is ready to alert you to the dangers and to the changes of, of your situation. Yes. Now, if Christ gave us a promise and told us that he's going to prepare a place for us in his father's house, now, imagine, if you will, a mansion the size of the Milky Way, okay? In a, a house, excuse me, a house the size of the Milky Way galaxy. Multiply that by a zillion. Now, that is your father's house. And in that house, there's a mansion prepared for you. Now, there is nothing in that mansion that you will not find wanting. You won't lack anything. There'll be no hunger. There'll be no thirst. You, you'll have peace in abundance. You'll have joy abundantly. You'll have power abundantly. There is nothing that is kept from you. Because what now belongs to him belongs to you. Haven't you ever had somebody come by your house and you say, mis casa su casa? Make yourself where? Home. At home. So when you go into God's house, you, he wants you to make yourself what? At home. At home. So, all because you've already shown yourself worthy to enter into the kingdom. 
So you don't have that. There's no no need to fast there. Okay, because you fast when the bridegroom is not there. Okay, so so but now you're married. Now you're part of the eternal family. But you can't get there until you are called victorious. Now, you, now, what does that have to do with being vigilant? Let me explain to you. The devil, somebody testified, goes east and west, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to get you to quit watching. One of the things that set David apart from his brethren and from others that were parts of families that were shepherds, David was vigilant. David didn't slumber. David didn't sleep on the job. David was too busy writing songs and counting stars and running down bears and taking lions by the beard and, and, and protecting his father's flock. Now, now, in order for him to do that, he had to be watchful. Sometimes the watchman would ask another servant, hey, look, it's time for me to take a break. Can you watch? But God says he, he, he's the ultimate watchman. He is the ultimate watchman. So I want to talk to you about a couple of instances that will give you an idea of what you've been charged with out of the mouth of Christ Jesus. First, let's go to Mark chapter 13. I'm going to try to take my time and see, see if the Lord will have his way in me. Is that all right? <clears throat> Verse 32. What chapter, sir? 13, Mark, chapter 13, verse 32. Now, hopefully, you'll gain a clearer understanding as what exactly it is that Jesus is trying to get us to understand. Are we in the morning watch hour? Or are we in the afternoon watch hour? Or are we in the cock crowing? What hour of watching are we in? That's a reasonable question. Most people will, off the cuff, say, I think we're in the evening watch or, or the night watch or whatever. And I thoroughly understand it. Y'all there? It says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, take ye heed. What? Watch and pray. For you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his what? Servants. Servants. And to every man his work and commanded the porter to what? Watch. Watch. Watch ye therefore. For you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, all. Watch. watch. You may be seated. So there is this repeated urging that, that where, let's, what does he say? He said, I don't want you to fall asleep. Last week he asked the disciples, he said, can you not watch with me? One hour. You can't even deal with one watch period. Huh? When, when, you, when you get to understand and begin to understand the urgency with which he is in, in, encouraging us to be vigilant, to watch, to, to pray, to watch. Why? Because you don't know when he might call your name. You don't know what hour he's going to come. You don't know what day he's going to show up. Will you be doing the wave at a Kansas City game? Huh? Will you be chanting, go women, yama, yama, go women, yama, yama? Or will you be saying, praise Jesus? What will you be found doing in that hour? Huh? Will you take that moment to get back somebody that just said something ugly to you? Will your hand protrude with one finger in the traffic after you just left brotherhood meeting? Because somebody cut you off? Will you lie on your time clock? Will you be negligent in your duties towards the church? What will you be? Are you going to be asleep? Because you know you can sleepwalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, you can sleepwalk. So, so now he's telling us, now the question becomes, why is it important for us to exhibit such vigilance? Well, your enemy never sleeps. To and fro is an indicator of a, non, of a restless traversing. He's always moving. He's never satisfied with just taking time off. Uh, that's why you'll find some people say, you know, I ain't going to church today. And it's easy for them to say that because they're, they're, they're ready to go to sleep. They, you know, God, you know, I don't think Jesus is going to come in the next four or five hours. Surely he could let me miss church today because I'm upset with Bishop. I'm angry at the people at Word. I don't like the people at Word because they don't, they don't blow my trumpet. They don't, they don't give me all the kudos I think they should. And, and, and they don't excuse my attitude, so I'm not going to go. But God is still on my side because he knows my heart. You fell asleep and don't even know it. Mm. You're in zombie land. You're among the walking dead. Uh, because now you have decided that I've been going to church enough, I've listened to bishop enough, i listened to the preacher enough, I've heard this over and over again, I am so tired of it. If Jesus is going to come, I'm going to give him three weeks. If he ain't here in three weeks, I'm going to quit watching. Mm. I watched a man stand at the altar, and his wife was delayed because of a flat, and he stayed at the altar. And then his bride was delayed because there was a gas problem, but he stayed at the altar. He stayed there and he stayed there. I said, well, brother, what you want to do? He said, I'm going to wait until she shows up. But we don't want to do that with Jesus. Because as soon as we get the wrong attitude and we think that we're picked on, we think that we're right, then we start doing wrong because we think we're right. I don't understand that. And Jesus won't understand it, and he's bigger than me. So, so are you called victorious? That is a very interesting thing. What does victory have to do with being watchful, with being vigilant? Well, you can't complete a, a, a two-mile run playing jacks after the first 40 yards. Y'all know what jacks is, right? You don't play it on a video screen. You actually have to use your motor skills. Yeah. You get, it's a ball, and you get 10 little spiked things. I think it's six spikes on it, and you throw it. You throw a handful of them, and they scatter. And so you got onesies. You got to pick them all up one at a time. You throw the ball up, you pick up one, and you got to pick it and catch the ball with the spike in your hand. You can't, you can't pick it up and put it in another hand and you catch the ball. You got to catch them. With this, that's jacks. And then you go all the way until you, so you learn how to throw those spikes. Uh huh, because you don't want to scatter them all over the place. And you got to pick, and you're on number 10, and you got to pick up all 10 with one throw of the ball. You learn how to throw them gently so they clutter. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. See, what we want to do is throw everything to the wind and think we can gather it. What you're going to be doing is trying to borrow oil for your lamp. Come on now. And he's, gone, and, and, and he's already sent his servant to retrieve. Oh, y'all need to stay with me here. Yes, sir. But there is hope because we serve the ultimate watchman. Go with me to the book of Exodus. I'm trying to encourage you to understand that this is not a religious order. This is not about a religion. This is not about you feeling good about yourself. This is not about your feelings not getting hurt. This is not go to Exodus chapter 14. This is not about that. This is about you being called victorious. But you cannot be victorious if you're not watching the move of God. If you're not vigilant, if you're not peering, if you're not leaning forward to see what it is God is doing and what is he going to do next. I, I marvel at the hand of God. I had no idea what God was showing me when he showed me that he could make gold float. And I'm going to tell you something. I like, I don't know about you, I like boiled eggs. Do you know that gold is heavier than eggshells? But if you boil an egg and break the shell and put it in water, that, that shell won't float. So if God can make an eggshell sink, how much more should gold sink to the bottom? 
Right. So when God showed me that I can bring the, those that are defeated, those that are underfoot, those that have retreated into misery, I can make them victorious. All they got to do is watch what I'm doing. Oh, y'all need to say something on that. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. God will pin your ears back, put weight on your shoulders just for your good. He'll put you in a tight place for you to say, okay, Father, I can't do it. And he's going to say, now you're going to let me do this? Uh-huh. See, you worried about an axe head floating. That was nothing to God. See, a man can say, well, I've seen an axe head float. We have that. We have, that's documented. But where can you find? I had a preacher tell me today, he said, I looked for an instance where gold may have floated. He said, I couldn't find anything. Well, if you did, it'd be a bunch of doubloons on the ocean. Huh? Because they would float. Huh? But, but he said, I couldn't find where gold could float. I said, no, gold don't float. But God can do the impossible. With God, all things are possible. What's too hard? For God. Preacher. You know, and, and this is where the children of Israel find themselves. Verse 20, uh, t -t -t verse 23. Start reading, reader. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horses. Now, here, uh, picture this. Okay, almost two million Israelites on the banks of the Gulf of Aqaba which is a tributary of the Red Sea. They're standing there and they're all side-eyeing Moses. They're all looking at Moses like, bro, we're getting ready to hang you up. Maybe Joshua and Caleb was on his side, and maybe Aaron, you know, like. But it, that, here you are, we just go through Pyroth, and we got these Egyptian warriors coming after us, and there's no boat, there's no cruise line, there's no bridge, there's not even a flotating raft. How in the world are we going to get from point A to point B? All we see is water. So here you are. And God says, okay, Moses, do this. Moses does that. Why did Moses know to extend his shaft, his, his, his rod? Because he was watching. He was wide awake. He remembered what God had done, and he was seeing what God was doing. He never fell asleep in his faith will. Huh? He stayed urgent and, 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 and mindful of the power of God. He didn't doze off into self-misery. He didn't doze off into I didn't get my way. He didn't doze off into the blame game and the fear game. He trusted God wide open, Come on. eyes wide open. So now they, they've crossed the waters. You know, they probably were singing all the way across on dry land. How in the world did God do that with this man? This Moses or something else. Y'all know they complained about him after they crossed. They wanted to kill him again. You know how it is. People, you get, they get saved. They've been saved for a year or two. They done read a couple of books of the Bible, YouTube their brain into jello to try to find loopholes, call their buddies that ain't serving God, that's weaker than they are. Huh? And then they say, oh, Bishop wrong. Wow. Wow. I'm wrong now because God is requiring something of you. <laughs> I'm wrong now because one of your kinfolks feelings got hurt. I'm wrong now because you think you're smarter than somebody that's been immersed in the will of God for a long time and has know what it's like to lose and to gain and to lose and to gain, to hurt and to gain and to, I, I, I know. See, now, these folks, on the other side, read. And it came to pass that in the morning watch. When? The morning watch. In the morning watch. The Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians. Now Moses, it don't say Moses looked up. Did, did it say Moses? No. Sir. It says in the morning watch the Lord. Now while you're watching, guess what Jesus is doing? Come on, He's preacher. watching with you. See, it's when you stop watching, why is he going? He's not here to babysit you. 
He's imbued you with power from on high so that you might be victorious. But if you lean to your own understanding, if you capitulate to the fears of this world instead of trusting in the own body God and what he has shown you, you can't say I'm watching. You're just like those that are asleep, that are, that are of the darkness. So now we find that in the morning watch, the Lord is there. The Lord is there in the morning. He's up when I ra- he's there when I raise up. He's there when I'm busy throughout the day, and he's there when I fall asleep. He's there in the midnight hour. I know we're not singing right now, but this word got to be getting somewhere. Okay, it said the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire. Where'd the fire come from? Where'd the cloud come from? And he did what? Troubled, and troubled what? The host of the Egyptians. He troubled all. All of your problems. He said, cast your cares upon me, for he cares for you. He cares for you. But we, we get caught up in a tizzy. There's, there's one thing to have a natural concern. There's another thing to fret beyond measure and to become anxious for nothing. Um, there's another thing to fret beyond what is of necessity. He said, fret not yourself because of the work of evildoers. Yeah. Because, see, when you start watching what they're doing and worrying about what you have based on what they're doing, then you can't be watching what Jesus is doing. I know y'all heard that. Mm -hmm. You can't watch what Jesus is doing, worried about what somebody else is doing. That's why some people can't even stay with Christ long. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, I've been walking this walk for 30 years. Yeah, you've been walking, but you ain't been living. Mm -hmm. You're a zombie. (laughs) Uh, You were walking dead. Uh, so now he took off the chariots, off the chariots' wheels, and that they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For who? The Lord, the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. So now God is getting ready to close the chapter on the Egyptians. Because guess what? The same God that told Moses, Put your staff out to go. Guess what he's getting ready to do? Close the door. God opened a door across the sea. Now God's getting ready to close it. What he said in the next verse? And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon Uh, the Egyptians. uh, uh. See, you might find yourself in a tight, but don't you know Moses is probably talking about, Yeah, Lord. (laughs) Yeah, what? See? Uh, Yeah, y'all was ready to kill a brother. Look at this. Watch this. <laughs> what you going to do? Come on. What you going to do? You can't do that. You, know, you weren't watching. You weren't watching when these Egyptians were just throwing goods at you to get out of Egypt. You weren't watching when he made it dark on one side and light on the other. You weren't darkened when hellfire came out the sky. You weren't watching. Wow. What were you doing? Preach, preach. What were you doing? I was, Moses probably said, I was amazed just to see a snake swallow two other snakes. Mm-hmm. And you up here concerned about water? Guess what? I serve the God of the waters. Uh-huh. So, so, so what did God give them in the morning? Watch. God gave them a victory through a sea crossing. Huh? Sometimes the water can look too, too bright and too broad and too deep and too troublesome. But don't you know we serve a God who has a son that can walk on troubled waters? <laughs> huh? But we don't want to watch that. We get caught up. What's the next best thing going on? Who is the, un- who's the mass singer winner? You know, there's something wrong. We, my wife, we sort of like that America's Got Talent thing. Y'all ever watch that? Yeah, that's sort of stupid now, ain't it? Ms. Vagaro, she's, she's a trip. She'll wear adjective out once. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. You're splendid. <laughs> it's just magnificent. Huh? But why do you give a dog a million dollars? Don't leave that show. They stupid. That ain't God nowhere up in that. Amen. Amen. So go with me to Judges. Chapter 7. See, that was the morning watch. Is the God, God, we think only God is God when we're awake. You know that? When we're busy. When we're doing something. Um, but when you sneak sneaking about, he's still God. 
Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When you lack the days, you won't read your Bible until Wednesday night or Sunday morning or Sunday school or Friday night. Or when you, somebody, can you please pray for my cousin? They're getting ready to have. So I've been praying for your whole family. Haven't you prayed? Yeah, well, if, if you write, God going to hear you. All you got to do is watch. You cannot be victorious. You cannot be called victorious if you can't even conquer the sleepiness of your soul. Mm. You, can't, you can't say you're victorious if you, well, I don't feel like, oh, that's what kids do. Baby, go read, go read Amos. Oh, ma, I'm tired, ma. I got to go. And then you go and see how many words you can skip over. But if it was a movie called Amos, you'd, you'd want to see that. <laughs> oh, so you can say, oh, I saw the movie. Again, Charlton Heston was not Moses. It was a movie <laughs> called <laughs> The Ten Commandments. Y'all there? Verse, uh, let's see, chapter 7, verse 19, read. This is good stuff right here. Y'all stay with me. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. Now, that, that here you have the middle watch. So, so now you find Gideon, they're getting ready to do something. That middle watch is getting ready to be dark. It's going into the late watch, the, the third watch. It's getting ready. He's going at the close of the middle watch. Remember, that's going from, from, from the middle of the day to when it turns dark. Y'all getting me? So he's, they done some scheming. They had to get things ready because they worked while it was day. What did they do while it was day? They got some trumpets together. They got some pitchers together and some lamps. Then they get all that stuff together. They had to gather all that because it was only 300 of them. Am I right? And so it took them a little time to get because these were new marching orders. See, you got to be ready for a change that only God can bring. You can't count on old stuff to do new stuff. Huh, like that. So here is Gideon, and God is about to move. He told Gideon, he showed Gideon, you don't have to be afraid. They're talking about you. And what they were doing was they were really talking about Gideon's God. Ooh. See, they were talking about Gideon's God because Gideon had the same God that Moses had. Mm -hmm. Gideon had the same God that Joshua had. Gideon has the same God that does not go to sleep and you cannot make God tap out. Come on up. So what he says is that the middle watcher, they had what? And they had but newly set the watch. They just set the watch. Newly set the watch. They just got ready for it. Mm -hmm. So they're doing something. Now guess what's about to happen? Go ahead, read. And they blew the trumpets and, and bre break the pictures that were in their hands. They did what? They executed the plan. They executed the plan because they knew what time it was. They didn't wait for the time to elapse. They seized the moment right then. They followed their instructions. Jesus said, watch, because you don't know which hour, but we're worried about the football game. We're worried about what the doctor's going to say. We're worried about what we don't have. We're worried about the wrong thing, and we're not watching. Don't you know when you start getting anxious for nothing, you can't watch? You can't watch. One of the things about Eisenhower and about Pat, they understood what defeat looked like. They tasted some defeat. MacArthur tasted some defeat. Huh? But you know what they said? MacArthur said it like this. He said, I shall return. And he mounted the shores of the Philippines once again. He did return. Because he was watching to see which way the winds of the tide of life were blowing. Patton 
was a little upset because Eisenhower became the commander of the European army, the, the armies over there, and, 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 and Eisenhower was thought to be inadequate for the task. But Eisenhower had been watching, and somebody was watching Eisenhower, and I venture to say that God was watching Eisenhower, and God was watching the people watching Eisenhower, and when Eisenhower was asked to go on over there and do what he had to do, Eisenhower, he, 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 he had to count the calls. And he said, press on. Patton said, I got to go. Patton didn't want to stop. Patton wanted to go on, but, you know, some orders came down. You got to slow down. Mm. We got to get some stuff to you. Yep. Huh? Huh? Sometimes you got to slow down so God can get some stuff to you. Huh? So you can know what it is to be called victorious so that you'll know what it means to go in conquering and conquering. Mm. But if you're not watching, you'll get caught off guard. Uh, you, you'll be found lacking. But God does not want his children to be found lacking. He does not want you walking around with your faces all long, with your feelings all hurt, with your, your, your temperament is out of whack. You're ready to cut somebody's head off and barbecue it. You're ready to bite somebody's neck and suck them dry. You're ready to go full-blown vampire, full-blown Rambo. You're ready to just go all off on somebody. And while you're doing that, God's got a plan and you can't even pick. Hold up, God. Let me go do this. Oh, mm. Wow. Next thing you know, when you stop and you tap out, and you say, okay, Lord, I'm going I'm to lean forward and see what you got. <laughs> huh. I'm going to peer. I'm going to look and see if I can scope out what you have planned. Don't you know the Lord loves it when you get nosy for his plan for you? You know, God, you, how are you going to say, well, Lord, I don't mean to be nosy? He's going to say, go on, baby. <laughs> Come here, let me show you this. Huh? You know, the angels were showing John. They said, come on, John, come up here. John said, what's this? He said, don't you know? <laughs> don't you know what it is? Huh? So, so God wants you to know, but you can't do it while you're asleep. I don't understand these young women that are afraid to pick up a Bible daily and read it. I don't get it. They're scared to read a book. They'll read everything else that their job requires, but they will not study the word of God. And so you want to know what's going on. God can use every soul in here, but he's not going to use somebody sound asleep. I've never met a person that could do an open medium med while they were asleep. Have you, Sister D? I ain't never seen nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, preacher. <laughs> wow. Preach. Have you ever seen this, Sister TJ? How you gonna preach and you sleep? Oh. Yeah. How you gonna testify and you sleep? Oh, man. You walking around with a bucket full of your feelings got hurt. Yeah. And you want somebody to sip out of it. Yeah. You walking around with a whole bag full of nasty attitude. Yeah. And you want somebody to call you friend. How is somebody going to call you friend and your, you all face all tore up? And you're walking around with uh, somebody ought to be spraying perfume before you get to the area. Throwing roses where you step. Uh, you got, can somebody tell me why ghetto girls like to wear their hair like they're going to the prom at the H-E-B? Oh, <laughs> They got on clogs. Ugly clothes, but they hair tight. They got three inch, uh, three inch eyelashes. Face made up, look like it's plastic. Huh? Like hair, you won't find a hair out of place making seeds all day long. Not making seeds all day long. Huh? Where it had the same. No, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, so read where we at, brother. Read. You 20. still there? J Judges? Yeah, tw verse, verse 20. 20. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and wow. of Gideon. Now here's the thing that's interesting to me about that. Those pitchers, the trumpets, the lamps, that didn't give them the victory. I know, man, they got victory with lamps and trumpets. No, they didn't. You know what they got victories with? Obedience. Yes, they got victory because they obeyed the one that had the middle watch. Come on, mm. 
See, if Jesus, if, if, if God had decided, if Jehovah had decided, I'm going to play a trick on, Jack, uh, on Gideon. I'm going to make him think he's going to win. They're going to war with pitchers and trumpets. Right. But I think Gideon recalled the story of a troop of people that were commanded to go after the ark around a place called Jericho. Hmm. I believe he remembered that. I heard something about people shouting at the same time, and the walls of Jericho fell. I remember a man with a stick over water that opened it up, and God used it to close it. I remember that God called me, thou man of valor. So he, it wasn't the noise that they made in the earth sense. It was the noise they made by being victorious in their watchful spirit because they trusted the God that had the middle watch. We, we, say, good, we say all the time, the Lord is with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. But then he watches you forget who he is and that you've said those things. I, I had a situation not too long ago, and I, was, I, I wasn't panicking. That's one thing I praise God for. I wasn't panicking. I wasn't anxious. I was curious because I was saying, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? I was looking for marching orders. I said, this is my situation. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. You remember I told you about how the Lord told me I was going to do something, and this was starting around June, and the Lord said, no, wait, not yet. Not yet. And so time go by. I say, okay, Lord, you know, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, hey, <laughs> I know I can't do this, but I know you're going to use me to see that it gets done, but I need to know what you want. You ever been there, Lord, what you want me to do? Because, you know, I know my God wants me to be called victorious. <laughs> okay. And so I said, Lord, I, I'm not sure. So I had a conversation with my daughter and, and my son, and I was talking to my daughter, and she's very careful with me because she knows how I am. I'm a very private person. And, and she said, Pop, I said, what, baby girl? She said, I'm going to ask you this, and, you know, I hope you don't mind, but da-da-da-da-da. And I said, da-da-da-da-da. And she said, oh, okay. I just want to say, hey, listen. She said, okay, that's all I wanted to know. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, and, and, and so I left it alone. And so a little while later, you know, I think I had a conversation with my son in the interim, and my son said, what, Pop? I said, don't worry about it, babe. I said, my God can make gold flow. She calls me back. She said, are you at home? I, where are you in the back? I said, yeah. So I go up there, and I saw gold flow, okay? And I said, mm, look at God. I said, all right. I said, Lord, but you know I got this, 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 and this. And the Lord said, keep watching. I said, so what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. And then Wednesday night service happened. And my wife came home, and I said, what? I said, look at God. I did not see this coming. I said, wow, look at God. I mean, bam. Because I, wa I, ha I wasn't really worried. I know I wasn't worried. I had determined in my mind that I'm, I'm waiting for the gold to flow. Mm -hmm. I just, he didn't show me that for nothing. You know what I'm talking about? He just don't do me like that. I'm going to tell you something. Don't you fail to let God, I'm going to tell you something. God never sets you up to fail. Oh, yeah. But it's you who fail to let God set you up. Because you're not watching. That's right. And so I, I looked, I said, okay, Lord, praise God. All I could do, I, I said, Lord, I cried in the back. My, I, I wept. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And I said, whoo, Lord, thank you. God, I, I, I said, how awesome are you? He said, it's okay, victorious one. <laughs> See, y'all don't hear what I hear. See, I, 
And so we had Bible study, I mean, uh, discussions Friday night. And uh, we had discussions Friday night, and I'm having a good time. I thought it was a good lesson. Was it a good lesson? We had a good time Friday night. I mean, that was some good stuff. If y'all didn't come, y'all, y'all probably was really hungry later on because the people that came was not hungry. That was good stuff, wasn't it, Mecca? Oh, that was good. And so, and so I get home. We not even out the parking lot. And I said, well, praise the Lord. That was good. I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm just glad about what he did yesterday and day before and day before. I'm just marveling at that because never saw it coming. See, God is the God, he loves that when you don't see it coming. <laughs> you, talk, you think you like to throw surprise parties for your hard-haired children. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, you like to so throw surprise parties. Look, God know how to throw a surprise party. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, he'll make you say, what? Glory! <laughs> yes, he will. So we're not even out the parking lot. My wife showed me something. She said, look at this. <laughs> I said, what? Really? Okay, Lord, you're just trying to make me show out on your name. Can I use your name? <laughs> Can I name drop you? <laughs> see, that's what you got to do when you're watching. When you see it coming, name drop God. Mm. Say, oh, you, are you bringing that? Jesus? Uh -huh. Preach, preacher. Okay. He got the morning watch. Jesus? Yeah. He got the middle watch. Huh, Jesus, he got the evening watch. All he's trying to tell you is he gave you power to watch. Oh, come on, church. He gave you power to be called the sons of God. He has made you watchmen. Watch for the move of God. Watch for him because Jesus is going to come back. He's going to, that was in 1994. He said, Terrence, today is the beginning of the end of the preparation. All he's doing is finishing touches on their mansion. You know how when you're building a house or you're doing a, a remodel on a house and you get through and you you dusting it up and you finishing and you, you sweeping up that last little bit because you want to get your reward. You want to get that final paycheck. You want, and you want to take pictures of your work. Don't you know Christ is looking at you? He's dusting things up. He's getting ready for your arrival. He's taking pictures. He said, look, Father, this is one of my brothers. He's part of the bride. Look, Father, this is Deacon. Look, Father, this is Deacon. Look, this is Deacon's wife. This is Sister Sunday. Father, ain't she? She going to look good and white, ain't she? Oh, look at God. I'm telling you, he calls you big Victorious, then Hallelujah. quit living like a loser. <laughs> yes, sir. If he calls you victorious, quit living like every time somebody hurts your feelings, you want to drag it around for a while. Yo, yo, quit dragging your hurt feelings around. <laughs> Where is me? What's wrong? Oh, I'm blessed, but I tell you, these people, shut up. <laughs> Can you imagine Moses if every time something came his way, Huh? I don't know what to do. Uh, these people just kill me, Lord. Just, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Shut up. Get up and go for it. Either you're going to trust God or you're not. So when we're watching, go to 1 Samuel real quick. I'm going to try to get y'all out of here. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 11. I'm almost through church. I know y'all hungry. Y'all thinking about Popeyes and stuff. <laughs> huh, chapter 11, verse 11. What do you read? 1 Samuel 11, 11. Ready to read? Mm -hmm. Chapter 11, verse 11. What does it read? Oh, I didn't hear that part. Okay. And it was so in the morning that Saul put the people in three companies. He, there you go. The three company things again, ain't it? Uh-huh. Go ahead. And they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch. In the and what? In the morning watch. Now, now, now you got to understand, Jabesh was in trouble. Jabesh was being told by their enemies 
that they, they, they would live if all they did was tell the men to take their right eyes out. And they sent for help, and they went to Saul because they were scared. I mean, can you imagine somebody saying, I'm going to let you live, but all y'all got to puck their right eyes out. That's a whole bunch of left-eyed people. <laughs> So, so Saul, now I'm trying to pick, he's there with them, and now you find that, that these companies, and they came into the midst of the host in the morning, they boldly got there, and they're in the middle of them. Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there shall I be in the midst of them. Don't you know when you're surrounded by your problems, and you get together with your wife and you get together with the Holy Ghost and you get together with Jesus don't you know he calls you victorious he can make gold flow come on preacher hallelujah you great. so what you surrounded by your problems if he don't use you he gonna send somebody to help you preach preacher uh, if you don't have what it takes, he gonna, God always has what it takes. He could take a small business with four employees and multiply it in no time. Next thing you know, you got 40. Next thing you know, you got 400. You got a fleet of vehicles. And you got somebody taking care of your money because you're too busy to run your business. <laughs> he can do that. And you'll be waking up with gray hairs talking about how did God do this? I was watching. I was busy obeying him and doing. Yeah, when you get busy obeying God, you wake up and you say, okay. Okay, Lord, how'd you do this? I, I, I was just going to do this. You just told me in 94 to watch. How'd I get here in 2023? And I'm preaching your word to your people. <laughs> because he just told me, you're victorious. <laughs> the things that I sold, I've had to, I, the things that I sold, I had to reap. <laughs> but after the reaping comes the victory. See, you, you, you grow corn to sell it, to eat it. God kept me. For his glory. For, you are here for his glory and for his honor. He calls you victorious. Now all he tells the victorious ones to do. huh? I want you to finish reading that when you get a chance. Because I want to take you to one more place. And we're almost through. Go to Psalms. Finish reading that. Go to Psalm chapter 63. The 63rd Psalm. See he, he's there in a the midnight hour. All he's waiting for is you to show up. Huh? We too busy thinking on other things. But if you go and you review your day in the, through the prism of God's word and God's will, you'll actually find that you're more victorious than you thought you were. If you replay and you say, you know what, I thought I didn't have enough paint to paint that, but God bless me, I didn't even have to buy no more paint. You know, I didn't think, I thought I was going to have to go buy some more nails for my nail gun. But God, I didn't even know I had that extra pack of nails for my nail gun. God knew that. I thought we was going to have to be here another extra two days. But how did we get this done? Well, because God is the owner of time. And if you God's son, that means you own time. And all you got to do is say, Lord, govern my day. Make me able to do this before the allotted time. That we, Don't you know if you have a job to do? And you say, ma'am, I could do this, and it's going to take four weeks. The long, If you do the four weeks, that's fine. But God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have you do it in three weeks because you're getting ready to get another job. So that fourth week is going to be starting something new. So guess what you've done? You've saved money, earned money to make money. That sounds like a plan. Amen. That sounds like victory. Huh? Smell like victory to me. You're there, 63. Look at what he says in verse 6, verse 5. He says, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. My mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips, 
When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. While you're, while you're watching over me in the night. I will consider your ways. I'll meditate on what you've done in my life. I'll, I'll relish the victories you've given me. I'll humbly accept the crown you give me. I will rejoice in knowing that you, oh God, gave me joy. You know, that's something when you rejoice because God gave you joy. Come on, preacher. I mean, when you rejoice because God has given you joy, he's given you strength, he's given you the victory, what more? Don't you know your, your rejoicing and your joy and your honor and your glory and his power and the faith and salvation, that belongs to God? And don't you know what he uses that for? He uses that as a branch in the waters of life so he can make gold float for you. Glory! Hallelujah. Yes, sir. He calls you victorious. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we, went, when we meditate in the night watch on the beauty and the wonders of God, when we consider the glory and the power that he has granted us access to, when we look into the things that he's prepared for those that love him, the world says you're foolish. The world, they lie on you and say you're the liar. They rob and they make mayhem. They try to traumatize you. The word trauma is a Greek word. It comes from the Greek, it means wound. So when they try to tra bring trauma in, when they try to hurt you, they think they're hurting you, but they're not hurting you. They're just helping you. They're adding seasonings to your life. All they're doing is making sure that you Jesus ready. Come on. All they're doing is making sure that you flight ready. Yeah. That you obey the signs. There's an exit on here. There's an exit door here. There's an exit door here. And you only can get through the one steward that's named Jesus because he is the one that we have to get to the Father by. Yeah. Hallelujah. So if we endure to the end, if we trust him in the hard times, rejoice in the good times. And if we just lay aside any dead weight of sin that doth so easily beset us, if we count on the things we know, people are going to say, man, who are you talking about Jesus like this? I, I never heard the word. I say, I'm, I'm, he calls me victorious. Uh, he calls you victorious, yeah. I'm one of the sons of God. Because God don't have sons that are losers. No. Uh, his sons are winners. His sons are victorious. His sons are champions. His sons are conquerors. I don't care if you conquer with a trumpet or a staff or a slingshot or word of mouth or word of faith. Shadrach, Meshach, they had no weapons. All they had was the weapon of faith. They trusted God. And when they went in the furnace, they went in winners and came out victorious. Mm. Uh, they went in being tried and came out or sanctified. They, 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 went in, they went in because somebody wanted to do wrong and they came out because right was in there with them. Hallelujah. Huh. See, they, see when, you, when you are on your watch, when you're praying, when you're trusting God, it doesn't matter how difficult, how, no matter what, trust God. He'll move. He'll cause those that seek to hurt you to be traumatized by their own words. You ever heard this? You're just going to hurt yourself. I was told a man was trying to exhibit greed in a transaction. And the lawyers had to let him know, you ain't going to do nothing but hurt yourself. Do you really want to go there? He capitulated. <laughs> he had to tap out. Uh, who is going to be greater than your God against you? Tell me what it is. Because on my right side are victorious people. And, and right here, I see victorious people. Over here, I see the victorious. Can you imagine that if I can see this with these eyes, 
how God can view you with his. Mm. God bless you. Hallelujah. God keep you. I want to encourage you to find five.